Okay, so I'm gonna go over some basic clay making instructions. I have my air dry clay here. Um, I chose the color of like the stone, mainly because I've worked with both like the kind of terracotta red clay and the white. That's totally preference up to you. Um, but I'm gonna try the stone color. If you plan on painting it, definitely recommend getting the white just because it'll be a little easier to cover up that color. But it is air dry, so if you do have some left over, you want to make sure that you put it in an airtight container to kind of preserve it. It doesn't last forever, but you'll still have a couple like good working months if you don't end up using the whole thing. I have my sketch here, but just a basic kind of container design. In this project, you'll have a couple different options about what you can or what I encourage you to create. Um, so I'm gonna work on designing a kind of like crystal-esque container, about seven inches tall, five inches by four. So, you know, roughly the kind of size of maybe something like this cup. Um, other tools that you're gonna wanna have, definitely something between the table and the clay, because the clay can make a little bit of a dusty residue. I have a couple different clay tools here. I've got a needle tool, some of the wooden tools that are good for kind of smoothing out, like this one this one's also really good for carving and designs if you want to get to that and at least one of my ribbon tools um also important to have a cup of water right even though it's air dry air dry the water is going to not only help you keep your hands clean if it gets too messy in the working but it can also help to kind of smooth out and you'll want to get it a little wet when you connect two pieces of clay together just to get a better hold even though you're not firing this and it is air dry it is always best to kind of practice those traditional techniques um, so you get in the process of doing. But I'm gonna go ahead and break off a little bit of my clay here. I'm gonna use my wooden tool just to kind of quickly semi-score it. It's really, really flexible. Like this stuff is really soft out of the package. It's almost like Play-Doh consistency. So I didn't really need to do that, but there's two different ways I'm gonna recommend that you use this clay, right? Because in tangent with this project, you are gonna be working on, excuse me while I get my paper towels. You are gonna be working on a relief carving project, which is kind of starting with that block form and removing away material until you get your desired effect. This is gonna be more working kind of the opposite way, right? So building up the volume or the shape of your object, right? So there's two ways to do it. What I'm gonna do for at least the base part, so I do wanna have a nice base, is flatten this out. Now, obviously, if I had like a little bit of a rolling pin, that would make my life easier. When in doubt, your tools can often double as multiple things. I'm actually gonna wanna get a little bit more clay for this for me. So again, this air dry clay is really, really flexible and easy to work with. You can see that it will stain your hands a little bit. You'll be fine. So I'm just gonna kind of flatten this out and make a slab for my base. Now, you're definitely welcome to kind of use whatever thickness you find available or pleasing to you. I'm gonna go for about a quarter of an inch to a half inch of thickness. Helps to kind of work back and forth and flip your clay often, because if you kind of do one way and you just add the pressure in one direction, oftentimes it can stick to whatever your base is. Now I know my piece of cardboard is just a kit, like a box container that I had left over. I have these little lines. I'm not worried about those. I can go always mark those off when I'm done. So I have this slab here. It's about a kind of quarter inch to a half inch thickness all the way around. So this is that kind of like when you see this texture, you can take a little bit of water to help you smooth that out. You can also let it dry a little bit and kind of get semi hard. And that can also give you those nice kind of smooth edges, but the water will help kind of smooth out any textures you don't like. Your needle tools are gonna to be great to kind of help shape out. So I want this shape to be kind of like an elongated diamond where the edges are a little bit curved. So just kind of using my needle tool, to kind of mask in my shape. Now, if you have a very specific shape in mind, you're also welcome to kind of create a stencil using like scrap paper, tracing paper, just regular computer paper. And then you can place it on top of your clay and kind of work it out that way. You do want to make sure with your needle tool that you get all the way to the bottom. You can see here I didn't quite add enough pressure. This is also why I have something between my table and my workstation. 
is because I don't really want to scratch the table. I know I have a brown craft paper. I also didn't want to get clay on that. But I'm going to use my water to kind of smooth out my base. I want to make sure my base is nice and sturdy. So this slab method is obviously really kind of nice if you know that all of your sides are gonna be more geometric. So for instance, at least one of these crystals, at least the bottom one, I'm gonna use this slab method to kind of work out my shape and connect them together, right? So just using a little bit of the water to help smooth. Something you might wanna to do too is kind of cut your pieces out all first before you smooth them. It's not gonna dry within like minutes or seconds. You are gonna have quite a bit of working time. But if you do have to kind of start your project and come back later, like in a couple hours or even the next day, definitely recommend, <clears throat> excuse me, putting it at least, putting maybe some damp paper towels, not sopping wet, but damp will help you kind of preserve that shape. But then also putting it in like a plastic bag, right? So taking like a, a grocery store bag or any kind of plastic container, kind of wrapping over your project and touching, tucking the edges underneath your work surface will help preserve your clay, right? So there's my base. I want a nice sturdy thick base because I want to make sure it can support the weight of my other clay elements and so it won't teeter or totter or lean. I'm gonna cut out a couple of these rectangular panels. Now my design, even though that's a really rough sketch, I'm not too worried about it being perfect, right? So again, if you are one of those people that need to kind of have precision in your work, by all means, you can kind of stencil out, get proper measurements, but I'm just gonna cut out a few panels here. I know that I want my crystal to kind of taper at the bottom and kind of connect just working off my design a little bit. Let's get one of those taller panels. All right, so I have three panels so far. Again, just kind of, it's almost like baking cookies, just kind of pulling the little slab pieces out from their molds. And again, this air dry clay is super soft, which is kind of nice to work with and really easy to mold back. So I can take my scraps, kind of give it a few rolls in my hand here before I press it out and re-roll it flat, right? I definitely, as far as brands goes uh, with the air dry clay, most are pretty okay, right? Um, I like the DOS, the D-A-S brand, just because it does hold up shape really well and it does dry pretty nicely. It won't, you will always get some cracks and I'll try to help you prevent getting cracks in your work <laughs> with a couple tips, but you know, for me, I like that one best. I've tried a lot of different ones, like the Artist Loft or like the Michaels brand ones. They're fine, but I just prefer this one. Just the, the consistency is a lot easier to work with. So I'm gonna cut at least two more panels. I want this crystal to be a five-sided shape. And again, I'm not, I'm not getting too worried about like it being absolutely perfect. My design is probably going to change a little bit as I work. So it's nice to have your sketches to work from, knowing that, okay, I might have to edit some things as I make and if things aren't quite going according to plan, or if you come up with new ideas, you can absolutely do that. So I have my all four or five, five sides, five of my sides here. Now I don't want to just connect them like this, right? And kind of squish. Although we're not like firing this in a kiln or anything, I do want to make sure that my hold stays, right? So we always want to kind of slip and score. Slip is usually a kind of water plus clay consistency. Using just a little bit of water for the air dry clay is fine. And just taking your needle tool or an abrasive tool and scratching along. I've had some people even use like really kind of messed up brushes, like paint brushes, and just kind of score that way. I also have a kind of scoring tool on the end of one of my wooden tools that can kind of be used to scrape and score. I prefer my needle tool because I like to make nice kind of thick scores to ensure that the clay really sticks and bonds together. This will hopefully help prevent the cracking of your clay, right? So this is the kind of cutting out slabs or panels method. So I'm going to kind of squish this together. I'm going to take my wooden tool here. You can also take your needle tool. I just like the softness of the wooden tool and I want to kind of scrape the clay back and forth before I smooth it out. You can smooth it out with your finger that has a little bit of water on it, 
but you want to kind of seal those edges together, right? Because I did push them together a little bit. Now the downside of this clay being super soft is that it's super soft and it can be a little tricky to work with in the beginning. So a good kind of rule of thumb if you are going to approach the slab method and make kind of panels first and then connect your pieces is to cut your panels, let them dry for a little bit, not hours, not hours, but kind of like give it like, you know, start with 15 minutes if it's still really you know, too wet, give it a little bit more time. And then just having them firm up a little bit, it'll be a lot easier to work with. The risk you run with that is that it might dry too much and then it becomes cracky. And then you can just add a little bit more water and you should be fine, right? All right, so I'm starting to kind of create my panel here. I'm gonna add these two together next. Now I'm not gonna bore you to death by doing my entire piece, right? So I'm gonna just show you the paneling method or the slab method. Let me score and, score and slip my other side. So it's just these kind of little marks. They don't have to be super deep, right? Adding a little pressure to kind of squish them together and then using a tool to kind of seal the seam essentially. Go for the top and the sides. Kind of smooth it together. Now again, I'm, I'm more of a kind of let's go with the flow person when I make art. So I didn't, you know, precisely measure that, you know, the thickness of all my walls was exactly the same because, you know, demos, I like to make things go a little fast for the sake of y'all not having to watch a 45 minute demo video. But if you do want to do that, you absolutely can. You can kind of get out some measuring tools. So you can see I have some cracking here, right? It's just the angle. So I'm really going to try to squish and smooth this part down before taking a little bit of a damp finger and kind of working that over. All right, so I'm just creating that kind of angled curve here. Fingers are a little too wet. All right, I'm gonna let that set up for just a minute while I start getting some of my other panels connected. Now this will kind of attach to here. So once you do have it attached, it'll be a little easier to kind of smooth out some of those rough curves. So when in doubt, if it's getting to the point where you feel like you might be overworking something, let it set for a minute, right? And then go back to it. Cause there's nothing like trying to just fight against what the clay wants to do, right? So again, you don't want a lot of water. You just want it to be a little tacky because this stuff is so soft to begin with. Just don't want to get it too, too wet or else you're just gonna collapse your, your piece. Scoring. Pushing these two together. Really helps to do add a little bit of pressure when you push together, because I can always kind of reform it. Taking my wooden tool, and again, just kind of marrying the sides a little bit better where my brute force of my fingers maybe wasn't quite the seal I was looking for. So it is gonna go through a process where you kind of have these like rough looking shapes and there's a lot of marks in the way, but that's okay. All right, so we need to connect these larger pieces, help it smooth that out a little bit. I'm going to reshape the top of that. I'm going to connect this piece that I have here in my hands to my smaller piece. Now I know the size of this, of this wall and this wall are not quite matched up, but that's okay because I'm just going to kind of go with the flow here. And I'll end up trimming it after. Again, you want that kind of firm connection at first. And this is my little bit wet side here. So again, if you are gonna do this kind of 
paneling method, I definitely recommend letting your clay sit a little bit just so you don't have the like frustration of the cracks opening back up and it being too soft. You can hold some of your shapes a little better. So ideally, if I was doing this not in a time crunch of a demo video, I would take a little bit more time, kind of let my pieces set up before I start connecting them. All right, so I'm gonna connect these last two pieces. And I will tell you that clay always goes through a rough phase, right? So if your project kind of looks not like you want it, like it's like maybe 50% there, but you're like, oh God, I can do so much better with smoothing it out. It's okay to kind of let it live in this like, not sad state, but just this unfinished state. It's fine. I know it's a little hard to see, but I'm smoothing out the inside here. Take my finger, help smooth out that ridge. So I've lost a little bit of my angles that I'm looking for, but what's gonna happen? I'm gonna kind of let this set up while I do the, the other demonstration of another way you can use to kind of create your, your volume of shapes, or help build whatever structure you decide. I'm gonna let that set up for a hot second. It also helps if you have a little bit of a fan. I do have a fan, but I don't want to turn it on for the white noise. I don't want to have to talk over that. So I'm going to let this set up. Now, eventually I will cut this off. I could cut it off now. Let's see how that works. I'm just going to kind of squish this side down. Cut that little piece off. So my angle is a little bit more fluid, right? So you can still see the kind of five paneled side. Now, all this kind of like curvy or lumpy bits. Once it hardens up a little bit, I'm probably going to take my ribbon tool and kind of work to kind of create those, those more rigid edges. So you can see when I use a ribbon tool right now, it is really soft and it wants to pull on the walls in a kind of negative way. But once it sets up a little bit, you should be able to use those ribbon tools absolutely no problem to kind of help reshape your piece, right? And you can even tell like just this first piece that I rolled out is a little bit more rigid, right? So it won't take tons of time for this stuff to really start setting up, especially when it's rolled thin, right? So that's why I say like a quarter inch is good, right? Because it'll give you stability, but it'll also dry fairly quickly, whereas something like a half inch or an inch thick will be a little bit cumbersome. So for this larger piece in the center of my design, I'm probably gonna use the coil method. So we have the, the kind of cut your panel method and stick your panels together, which gets you that kind of like structure a little bit faster. But as you saw, it can be a little tricky to get your, your holds just right. Something else you can do, especially if you're going for more curved linear or rounded forms, is you can do the coil method, right? So I have a little bit of a coil here. I'm just gonna kind of, got that a little bit thin. I'm gonna kind of map out, it's kind of this shape, just a little bit smaller. So I know my base is, it's gonna kind of open up like this before it closes. So I'm gonna kind of make a few curved points here. It's a little thin. All right. So with the coil method, you can always start with a base. Essentially what you're doing is you're making these little snaky coils and I'm gonna start building my form up slowly, right? Almost in kind of like a, a snake pattern all the way up, right? I like this method. It is a little bit more to clean up in the end, but you can create some nice, really fluid shapes where like, let's say if you wanna do a sphere, cutting panels to cut the sphere is like, it's not that you can't do it, but it's usually a little easier to kind of start this way. Now, again, you can kind of wet your coils a little bit but especially with how soft this stuff is, of course you can score it too. Any fired clay, you would wanna score and slip before you start adding new clay. But your air dry clay should be fine. So I'm gonna start pushing down a little bit and start building up my wall. Essentially, I am gonna to try to start going out as I do this. Alright, 
So you can see I'm starting to have this form. Now all of this is something I can clean up once I have enough of that kind of base to start with. And notice as I'm coiling, I'm starting to kind of spread my fingers out, right? It'll help get you a nice kind of even or consistent coil. You don't want any spots to become too thin or too thick in the process. Kind of score and dampen my clay. As I'm working. Your clay is always going to go through a kind of like ugly phase. Ugly phase. You can tell that my, that my piece is starting to open up a little bit. I'm going to do one more coil. Just to kind of show you that you don't 100%, especially with the coil method, need to like, when your clay is this soft and it's just out of the pack, you don't really need to score, score it. It does help with the connections, but so I'm going to start opening this up a little bit more. I am using pretty firm pressure, right? So it's not just kind of gentle pressure, but like you can see that I'm really squeezing my fingers together and adding a little pressure, but you don't want pressure like this where you're kind of squeezing and that pressure. You don't want to just want it to squish out, but you just want it to be enough of a kind of join where it, it squishes together a little bit more, right? So it's kind of firm, but gentle. I know that doesn't always make sense, but this way will help because I'll have this kind of line that will be easier for me to take a wooden tool, a needle tool, or even the, the backside of a ribbon tool and kind of flush those together to make a better joint, All right? So that's what I'm gonna start doing with this. Now, because this is an open container, I can hold the side here and I'm just kind of pulling my coils together. I like this wooden tool because it has a little bit of a tooth to it. Now all this texture I can smooth out, I'm not worried about that. Again, it goes through rough phases, but you can see that the coils and the consistency is key, right? Because I want to make sure I have enough clay to really kind of push and pull. So in the end result, I can have this flat kind of appearance or look. This air dry clay is also really nice because you can get a lot of really cool textures, right? You can carve into it really well. And so it's all the benefits of working with really flexible kind of kiln clay or fired clay without having to have and own a kiln, right? Which is not something everyone has. I don't, I don't have a kiln. All right, I'm just going to go around the outside here, kind of strengthening the walls. Now, if you find like I have a little bit of a weak spot right here, I can always take a little bit more clay, kind of add to the outside. I'm going to do that as soon as I finish smoothing this out. All right. So I know I haven't quite done the inside of my structure yet, but before I get too carried away, where was my thin part? My thin part's right here. I'm going to kind of flatten this, add a little bit more, and just help smooth that out. Right, just to give it a little bit more support. So this is again why you're, it's so important to make sure that your clay coils are the same consistency. Now I've got the outside smooth. I'm gonna work a little bit more on the inside. With the inside, because I don't wanna necessarily, I don't want it to be too flexible. It helps to kind of pull up, right? And again, I'm using my other hand to kind of support the wall as I start to blend this together. Almost there. Feel a little bit of a weak spot at the bottom. I'm just gonna grab some more clay, kind of pack that in and around. And again, this air dry clay, especially when it's right out of the pack, is great. You don't really have to worry too much about slipping and scoring. The real reason behind slipping and scoring is that in fired clay that goes in a kiln, you wanna make sure that you don't have any air bubbles, right? Because if you fire it and it has air bubbles, the air bubbles explode and your piece goes 
We don't have to worry about that because our air bubbles aren't gonna go. There's no heat involved in this, just the kind of drying out of the clay, but you know, good, good practice. So I know I have more of a circular shape and I'm looking for more of that kind of angled diamond-esque shape. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna kind of bring that back together. All right, so I have my structure. It's actually pretty smoothed out. I'm gonna kind of work a little bit more. It's nice voluminous open. I mean, it's still rough, but hey, we're working on it. So what I can do, there's a couple things I can do, but I can take some of my tools like this tool here, this wooden tool that has a little bit of an angle and redefine my edge. Right? So I'm looking to kind of redefine those flat edges and those cornered bits. Right? So I'm kind of taking my tool and just bringing back some of those cornered edges. Right? So I'm kind of leaning and pushing a little bit more strongly. I want a really nice deep corner here. Kind of bring back my my crystal-esque shape. All right, a little bit stronger, still a little curved, but we'll roll with it, right? So I don't know, I would honestly probably, before I start getting too carried away, you can kind of see the, the mimic here. Might have need to make my base a little bit bigger. Um, and that I'm starting out with this shape. Now I would probably let this set up before I start adding the second kind of panels that go in because you don't want it to be too flexible and get too high or else you're probably gonna have your piece collapse, right? So if you are making something tall, take some time and do your structure in layers, not to the point where it's so dried out that you can't manipulate it, but you can still see that even this base piece is pretty soft, right? So I can probably still roll this out. I right? can still see, I mean, it's firmer, but it's still pretty soft, right? And so, like I said, I needed a little bit bigger of a base and kind of roll this out, maybe a little bit wider. It's a little bit bigger, right? And kind of connect connect my pieces, right? So it's not gonna be like super fast. This is gonna take a couple hours, if not day, it'll take days to fully set up, right? So this is not necessarily a project you can get done really quickly. You are gonna have to kind of space out your time a little bit, but just some simple kind of steps. Now when it comes to cleanup, you guys can see that my hands are completely gray, right? So I would honestly kind of take a paper towel and get some of the clay off my hands, right? You don't wanna put clay down your sinks, right? Even air dry clay. So you do wanna make sure that you work to kind of get the clay off. So use your water cup. You can kind of rinse off your tools in there first and getting off any of the big chunks of clay. Like I have a big chunk of clay on the edge of this tool. Scooch, right? So I'm gonna kind of clean off my tools in my water cup that I was using first. And then you can let your water cup set, right? Because the clay will sink to the bottom. That way you can kind of pour off the water and make sure that the big clay lumps are still at the bottom, right? So once you do have a majority of the clay off your hands, I'm not really clean because I'm gonna finish this off the demo, right? So you guys can kind of have a picture, right? Once you have like big chunks of clay off your hands, you can obviously wash your hands like normal, but you just don't want any kind of like loose pieces like this or even like this to go down your sink. Cause once it's hardened, your plumbers are not gonna thank you for that, right? But when I go to attach these together, right? So especially like I wanna attach this side wall to this side wall, I'd still use my kind of slip and score method, but I could also make a coil and kind of patch the seam, right? So kind of, kind of lift this up. I know the other one's fragile. So I can make a coil here, kind of score it and put it in and then smooth that out with my wooden tool. Right, so just a few kind of quick tips on some basic clay structure. I'm gonna finish this off camera and then hopefully show you the finished result.